uh, originated, I think, in, in, in uh, Naples, the Bank of Italy, where we started to talk about, and now realize that we were saying the same thing. And then Italy being less, uh, you know, technical, you know, than me. Um, but I decided to help him make this model. Uh, wow. you know. <laughs> so, okay, I'll let you know when you have five minutes. Okay. Is it, is it a bar model? No. Okay. <laughs> my next joke was, well, that's my trade. Uh, all my favorites are bar models. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Uh, so, well, um, I met Regalo, this is a paper with Roshan uh, on sellers, inflation, and distributed content, and in the, the type of change of the program. Uh, so that's um, um, that's the uh, actually, what's funny about my presentation probably is that in a workshop on monetary policy and income distribution, I was going very, uh, I will not talk much about monetary policy, just mm -hmm. focusing on, <laughs> on uh, the second part. Uh, it's the relation between uh, prices and, and the distribution of income. So that's the outline of, uh, of the presentation. Um, I'm going to start with some uh, motivation of such goals and a few stylized facts, uh, and then go through the through uh, a micro macro framework of. Uh, of of, of, of the relation between inflation and, uh, and, and income distribution with constant markups and with endogenous, uh, with markups evolving endogenous. Um, well, the motivation, probably I don't need to speak uh, much about it. Uh, there has been uh, uh, a renewed interest in, in the relation between uh, inflation and income distribution, quite obviously, um, there, and with a kind of uh, Two big debates within the post Keynesian community on one side, and we and also within the mainstream on the other. Within the post Keynesian community, much of the discussion went on in uh, the monetary policy institute blog as well as in the INF blogs, uh, were re related to the idea of whether inflation can be seen as profit led or not, with you know contrasting views uh, on it. Um, but while within the mainstream, there was the resurrection. Um, um, I'm thinking of uh, Blanchard and Krugman, of the theory of uh, conflict-driven inflation, not taken from the side of profit earners, but you know, more uh, you know, trying to blame inflation on the workers by resurrecting the idea of the wage price spiral. Um, so uh, the, the problem with that is that there is, uh, uh, you know, right from the beginning, so a few months after the, you know, the the the, the surging. Uh, Surging inflation rates uh, were quite uh, was already quite clear that uh, rising prices were not to be attributed to to uh, the wages, not mainly to rising profits, um, or better that rising profits were kind of uh, more correlated, with, regardless of the causation, with with rising prices. Um, and uh, you know this was showed by uh, Bevens in uh, July two. Uh, as well as by uh, Angler and Kovner, who documented a positive relation between uh, gross profit margins and inflation, and uh, in line with a point made more practical level by Weber and Besner, uh, where they, the authors of also showed a positive correlation between inflation and profit margins. Um, um, Conscal and Luciani also observed a significant and abrupt rise in markups in some, especially in some sectors, and especially in 2021, uh, which was particularly pronounced among companies positioned at the higher end of the markup distribution before the pandemic. So, I mean, these are um, just correlational studies in, in a way. They're, we, we, they are not inferring theoretically that there is a relation that runs from markups to prices. So, it's important to mention that. Uh, but but still, the, the fact that uh, that unlike previous inflation episodes, speaking of the seventies, uh, wage uh, wages kind of followed uh, nominal wages kind of followed uh, prices rather than and, and causing uh, causing price surges. So uh, 
to a large extent, all the debate around profit-led inflation, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use in an interchangeable way profit-led inflation and uh, sellers' inflation, which is a term of course popularized by Isabella Weber. So um, a, a lot of, of the of, 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 of of the much of the debate it seems to boil down uh, to to me and to to, 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 Philippe, to kind of controversy in semantics. So there is no clear uh, clarity uh, in um, uh, often there is a, there is a lack of clarity around what is uh, profit led inflation and also what is conflict. So the first one uh, regarding profit led inflation, I think that the debate kind of pol uh, polarized around two. Um, uh, two views. One that that was interpreted in profit-led inflation as a unstable process, so of uh, rising and possibly accelerating inflation rate caused by the greediness of uh, of, of entrepreneurs. Um, while on the other side, I think probably the, uh, what in, in our opinion is a more uh, precise uh, representation of pro what profit or sellers' inflation is is a kind of, uh, 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 of a markup slash profit share targeting following a cost of shock with firms being able to exploit uh, 30 years of rising uh, concentration before the, 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 the pandemic crisis to rise to raise markup when the cost push when when the cost push uh, uh, shock happened and, and I'm gonna expand on that. Uh, the second one is uh, the uh, the Kind of the the past, uh, the, the discussion about what, what is really conflict. So um, dictionary, you know, really going <laughs> into the semantics of the word conflict is a, a, an active disagreement as between opposing opinions or needs. Uh, and uh, I'm saying this because in the in occasions usually. Uh, you know, motivate much of the of, of their uh, idea that inflation is conflict driven by principally looking at, at the effect of nominal wage nominal wage resistance uh, uh, compared to uh, compared to profit uh, you know, profit earners resistance. And so, what we try to do in the paper is uh, to uh, show that balancing the macroeconomic books on the backs of workers, as Mark said. Uh, uh, Say is also conflict. It is uh, that if profit earners try, uh, if profit earners manage to maintain their profit margins or even increase it, this is social conflict because they, you know, again, they are balancing the the, the books of export workers. So, in regard, uh, so uh, inflation is uh, is always and everywhere a matter yeah. of social conflict. That's how it's say. So with this in mind, the paper will, uh, will, will uh, first investigate the nature of the current inflation wave, developing a micro macro framework uh, of the seller's inflation, and then contrast the, uh, the revived by a flawed idea of the wage price spiral with that of the profit price C. So conflict coming from profit earners, we not stable rather than stable process. Um, I can skip. So, uh, by looking at the, uh, at, uh, I'm gonna show just a few stylized facts. The first one is uh, the evolution of price per unit of output in the US. I mean, most of the uh, of, of the story that we are gonna do that we develop in the paper is about the, the US. So uh, where, where we believe there, there is substantial evidence of the fact that markups did, did increase. So uh, if we look at the, at the evolution of price per unit of output, we can see that after uh, you know they uh, taken uh, one one hundred in uh, the second quarter of uh, twenty, then there has been a strong uh, uh, strong price surges uh, in twenty twenty and twenty one twenty one uh, with uh, with then unit prices stabilizing in twenty twenty two. So again, um, you know this kind of uh, uh, goes in the direction. Uh, of, uh, of arguing that profit inflation can is real, but it's uh, temporary. And, I mean, it's uh, probably yesterday, Joe Stiglitz also uh, released an article uh, arguing for us. That's the same, but, you know, indicating <laughs> the temporary uh, theme on uh, the transitory inflation. Uh, this is, you know, the, the if we instead we look at, at the percentage change, you know, the annual inflation rate 
uh, we also can see we can clearly see a kind of bell shaped uh, behavior of inflation. Uh, let me show you the same 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 thing. Now, where does inflation come from? Uh, again, taking 100 in the second quarter of 2022, we can see how uh, profits, uh, um, as unit profits, contribute disproportionately more than wages to, uh, to, to, to price surges. So what basically uh, wages after December 2020 uh, started to recover, but basically, you know, the, the, what basically what wages did, unit wages did, was basically follow uh, unit price increases while profit, uh, profit, uh, unit profits skyrocketed. Um, I mean, this is uh, nothing particularly new, and of course, the reflection of that is that the wage share went down, um, uh, compared to, to, the, to, to this, the start of 2020. So, uh, this is also documented in a recent paper published by uh, Mark Seth with the Journal of Classification Economics. Uh, where uh, uh, using um, NBR business cycle uh, uh, data and thread data, uh, the the old uh, mark shows that uh, you know, basically what I just said the growth uh, of uh, of wage share from 2021 to 2022 has been negative, and as kind of a reflection of that, the, the growth the growth of the of the gross markup as as, as possible. Now, how can, we, how can we make sense of this using a very simple uh, model, starting with a, with a Kaletskian uh, pricing equation, uh, in which we consider the price of, so this is, now we enter in the kind of macroeconomic explanation of, uh, of, uh, uh, of seller's inflation. Um, so since we are basically saying that workers did not contribute to, uh, to, to price surges, the bottom line of this is that we don't need a conflicting claim model, as conflict comes really just from one such of classes, which are from the next. Uh, so, um, looking at the pricing, uh, oops, but the pricing procedure of the of the I firm in the J sector, uh, you know, we are basically saying in line with Kaletskian pricing, uh, with Kaletskian cost plus pricing. That the, the 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 price of of uh, of, in, uh, of the good produced by the I firm is given by uh, a positive uh, positive is a function of a positive markup over wage costs uh, and uh, uh, unit uh, energy raw materials uh, and intermediate products uh, <clears throat> costs. So uh, what we are if you look at the uh, subscript, you can see that the uh, what we are assuming here is that. Within the sector, the, 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 there is a uniform nominal wage and a uniform uh, price of energy raw materials and intermediate products in the sector. Um, and, uh, and also we augment the, the, the pricing equation by, by including, similar to what Marx has with us, uh, we uh, uh, incorporate an error term reflecting an anticipated uh, uh, price choice. So what, um, Looking at this equation, there are essentially three main candidates uh, to explain uh, price increases at the firm level. The first one is this uh, kind of error correction term epsilon i, uh, which is uh, in our framework the only way to kind of take into account um, um, expectations in a way on, on the cost structure of the firm and even as. Uh, uh, that's always, uh, you know, the idea that expectations can play uh, a major role in, uh, in price setting, and uh, you know, the, the error term can be, you know, persistently positive, has been criticized by by the root. So, you know, we basically assume in the in the rest of the of, of the analysis, this episode is actually zero. Now, the other two uh, more plausible channels are the the cost channel. So, I'm increasing the price of uh, Energy, raw materials, and intermediate goods. So that are so when the price increases, we have a constant markup. Um, the um, the you know if, if the, the, the costs are what pa are passed to, to prices, what well, this will create a shift in the functional distribution of income. As you can say, we're going to see. And the last one is the markup increase. Uh, so if uh, 
the ith term operates in a in sector that is systemically significant for inflation, as Weber and Lassner say, then uh, it is likely that uh, the, the markup had endogenously adjusted during the, the post public recovery. So, well, but let's go to the um, to these two channels one by one. So, first of all, again, nothing new. Uh, but from Kaletsky, we know that there is a relation between the markup and fractional distribution of income. So, of course, when prices, when intermediate, uh, when the when the price of energy, raw materials, and intermediate food increases, then the uh, this will uh, lead to a shift in the functional distribution of income from which you know, returners. This will also be discussed in basically all post keynesian textbooks, but it was also discussed recently in, uh, in the exchange between several scholars and Mark Lavois. Uh, so, and also with, uh, with in, uh, in exchange with in the exchange with Michalis in the course of the blog, in the IMF blog. So uh, again, when prices in, when the price of uh, when PM increases, this will create this will, this will lead to a shift in the functional distribution of income from uh, you know a, a perverse redistribution from from wage earners to profit earners. So. Um, we have a given, and this is we have a given markup, so no question about it. If there is a one time increase, uh, there will be a one time shift in the function distribution. Of it. Can you call this, uh, you know, then the question arises on whether you can call this profit inflation uh, or it's just a cost push. I would say that you cannot call this, call, you cannot call this profit inflation, but still, uh, one must acknowledge that when you that if. Uh, that if profit earners uh, are able to, uh, to keep their profit margins changed, well, uh, there are always winners and losers in, in an inflationary situation. Um, now, uh, the second, but probably most more, more interesting point, and the, novel, uh, the novelty of the analysis, is uh, comes from the idea that markup can endogenously adjust to exploit changes in cost structures and, and, mar and seller's market conditions. Um, so this does not so you, we, we basically aim at is a is a um, uh, is a framework of endogenously adjusting markup. Well, that doesn't mean that markups can increase at the will of the firm and regardless of sector and industry specific conditions. So uh, and I think this came up in in uh, in, in, in our previous uh, uh, presentation of this work in Rio. Of course, uh, um, the the markup of the firm is strongly dependent on uh, competition, uh, uh, concentration, and prof profitability constraint within the sector, regardless of uniformity in the rate of profit. But still, of course, the markup, the, the, the maximum markup that can be can be achieved in the sector is kind of a function of, of, of the maximum profit rate in the sector. Uh, still, um, what we argue is that uh, markup did adjust uh, and can adjust following a uh, drastic shift in cost structures uh, and, and, and the market conditions that were uh, caused first by the COVID pandemic and second by geopolitical tensions. Um, and this is uh, in line with a point raised by, by, by Mark Sandefeld again in, in his uh, GPK paper, where um, Basically, uh, uh, Mark recognizes that firms encountered a permissive pricing environment in which they they have uh, they have been able to exploit increased corporate concentration by increasing markups and so inflate prices independently of the past two effect associated with the pricing costs. Um, so now the, the second uh, another objection can be why didn't markup increase before the pandemic? You know we have seen a. Uh, a substantive there, there have been substantial evidence also from uh, mainstream economists of the fact that there, there has been a uh, rising corporate concentration over the last 30 years but still um uh you know mark while markup still markup did increase but they did not they didn't increase much as to provoke uh the inflation episode that that, that we saw in the post covid recovery um and uh, uh, so the, the, the bottom line here will be that um, the Kaletsky, Kaletsky cost plus procedure cannot be uh, separated from, uh, uh, from I know, the original all and, leap, all and each uh, uh, idea that the that pricing decisions follow a kind of a game between sellers and buyers. 
Um, and uh, so when, when a cost push shock uh, happens, the fairness constraint is, kind of, is relaxed. And so the, the, the cost push kind of um, provides a kind of camouflage uh, for firms that allow them to increase markup and, and profits. And then prices, sorry. <clears throat> So um, how can this be captured in a very simple uh, framework? So what we see uh, from stylized evidence, for back, we see that unit prices increased in a kind of, well, kind of S-shaped pattern, especially if you look at the, before the, 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 the COVID-19 pandemic, we basically had unit prices following a kind of S-shaped uh, uh, curve. So, in other terms, prices did not increase abruptly, and at some point, the inflation episode um, uh, was stained uh, more because of the uh, of the, the temporary. Uh, we argue more because of the temporary elements uh, 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 that, that cause it, rather than the intervention of contractional and monetary policies. So uh, this can be captured by the idea that unit prices increase smoothly up to a plateau um, <clears throat> that can be seen as a kind of a, you know, a very simple way to capture this is to use a sigmoid uh, shaped function like a logistic function. Um, so uh, we define a logistic, the, the mark, so we look at the endogenous evolution of markup as uh, governed by, by this function in equation four that is basically a five parameter logistic function um, that you know I'm gonna go to to the to the elements of the function, but you know the bottom line of this is that uh, the the specification implies that markup and its prices can increase up to a to, to this parameter if you need uh, that is the the, the 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 time in which the the uh, the, the shape of the sigma uh, curve changes, and after that, they will come back to a situation in which the markup does not increase anymore. So, okay, there is a, a profit inflation in other terms, so even three. Profit inflation is real, but is temporary. So, markups can increase after a cost push shock because of changing market conditions, and uh, uh, but, but, but this cannot last forever. At some point, firms will encounter uh, profitability constraints. And uh, you know the 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 the, the inflation episode will, will, will then disappear, and so the profit led push uh, follow the profit led uh, inflation following cost push shock will will fail as well. So these five parameters logistic function, you know, this is the the, the most general way to capture a S shaped uh, kind of behavior. Um, you know, it, it squarely depends on on two. Um, two parameters. The MJ max, that is the maximum markup that can be achieved in sector J, um, that is a function that can be seen can be seen as a function of the profitability of, of the maximum profit rate in the sector. And then the, the, the growth rate GC that can be interpreted as the oh, sorry, as the maximum domestic inflation rate in the sector. It is assumed to be exogenous for the sake of simplicity, but it's basically a measure of the past two effect of uh, of high of higher costs to, uh, to the higher markup, and then so what basically uh, what, what this implies is that the markup will had increased. You know, this is probably the first phase of the pandemic recovery. Then in two thousand twenty one, markup kept increasing <coughs> strongly. And then in 2022, they stabilized. And so, uh, and following the stabilization of the markups, also prices did stabilize. Again, this captured the evolution of unit prices as a, as a stable uh, process. And uh, if we look instead at, at, the, at the growth rate, yes? It's five five minutes. minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, uh, so the inflation rate, again, what will, will go down following the fact that markups uh, stabilized. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, produces a permanent shift in the distribution of income, which is not one time, but is uh, 
uh, it, it follows the kind of the, the, the logistic evolution of, of, of markups with profit share travel ah, thank, thank you. you. So I gave you the file. Oh, yeah, great, good. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> with profit uh, with the profit share rather increasing up to the plateau, uh, up to a plateau and the wage share simply. So uh, just to, to sum up the, the microeconomic uh, uh, argument uh, about around it. So we have first a cost push, uh, a cost push uh, um, that is uh, captured by an increasing PM in, that is uniform within the sector. This, the, 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 the sector that is uh, significant for, for inflation. So uh, we basically have a direct effect from uh, uh, from uh, from higher costs to higher prices with a constant markup, and then a second a second indirect effect that goes through the the, the pass through effect of higher costs on higher markup up to uh, uh, to a maximum markup within the sector. So the the combined effect of these uh, of of these two direct and indirect channels will produce temporary profit inflation. How does this translate at the macroeconomic level? Um, so uh, the the first probably the first formulation of the relation between uh, uh, between inflation and uh, distribution should be attributed to, uh, to, to to John Robinson. I mean something that can be uh, you know a, a, the, 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 a framework that we that we try to recover by adapting it is John Robinson's inflation barrier. That is, uh, however, um, always been framed. Uh, as an explosive process caused by workers success in defending their real wages in, and thus producing a wage price spiral. Um, so uh, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is no evidence of a wage price spiral whatsoever. And also there is no evidence that the process, uh, that the relation between price and distribution is an unstable one. So uh, in other terms, what we are uh, uh, looking at uh, is to uh, that at least as long as there is no strong worker resistance, uh, the framework should be flipped uh, from, uh, from the idea of a wage price spiral to one of a profit price scene. So uh, uh, as, worker, as, as profit earners uh, resist to increasing costs by first defending and then trying to, by first defending a certain profit share, an aggregate profit share, and then trying to increase it, uh, this will create a temporary process of, it, of, 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 of profit inflation, um, as long as this target can be uh, can be can be defined. So to to capture now we get to the, the to the macro uh, to the macro framework. Uh, as long uh, so, uh, what we are trying to 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 build here, unlike uh, what, what has been done in the past by by Robinson. The, then connected the idea of inflation barrier to the Cambridge uh, growth model. So we do two things. The first one is to uh, build a model that is actually more of a, a framework uh, that is uh, uh, that, that that account for the mechanism of, of, of the profit price sink without uh, having an explosive uh, process. So we consider so we consider real income as constant. Also, to to avoid the, the the difficulties associated with with uh, with the objection, yeah, you know, we, we take demand out, out of the picture essentially. So we cannot argue that, that there is no way to argue that that inflation can, is is caused by excessive demand. Uh, so uh, Y will be now nominal income. So any change in nominal income will reflect a change in prices. Um, <clears throat> and uh, well, it's uh, as the sum of uh, of wages uh, and profits, and then we assume that wages, so uh, the, the wage bill, is uh, uh, just given. Uh, you know that the wage earners uh, adopt their uh, their their nominal wages, looking at income, uh, looking at nominal income in the previous period. So uh, they kind of follow what happens to to nominal income through a parameter eta. That can take any value between zero and one, well, between, uh, between well, any value actually, any positive value. If it's one, uh, uh, if eta is one, it basically uh, workers are able to pass all the, the price, uh, price increases to wage increases. Uh, so 
eta in other terms is a parameter that measures the ability of workers to defend the real. <clears throat> Uh, so, can, so uh, even though eta is one, so workers can pass uh, the, the 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 their can pass the the, the higher uh, nominal income to the wages wage increases. Uh, what I'm going to show is that this can still uh, produce a perverse in number distribution if profit earners try to maintain profit at a percentage of total costs. Of particular of wage costs, which is initially immediately, uh, uh, which is a, a, well, it's uh, it's this uh, of a percentage of total cost, which it is immediately after the initial shock. So, uh, if uh, uh, aggregate profits follow this function, then uh, uh, so, and we are going to show you two uh, possible scenarios. With, uh, with constant and evolving uh, profit share target, but you know essentially if profit earners uh, set and, and uh, are able to maintain a certain target of, of, the, of the aggregate profit share, then um, this will create prop temporary profit profit level inflation. So uh, if we solve the model for uh, for the growth factor of nominal income, yes. If we solve the model for, for the growth factor of nominal income, that is essentially the, the growth factor of prices with constant real income, we see that there is a, uh, that uh, when the profit share target increases, then uh, the inflation rate will increase as well. Uh, so if profit earners maintain a profit share target, any change in such target will have positive effects on nominal income. And then given that real income is constant on prices, so uh, the uh, the target may or may not be stable over time. Uh, in so we consider two scenarios. In the first one, the the the, the, the profit earners um, try to maintain uh, a profit share at the, at the aggregate level is uh, it's the same. Well, it's uh, it's the, uh, it's given by the percentage of total costs prior to the price shock. So if epsilon is the price shock. Uh, uh, like a cost push. Uh, so if, if epsilon is a cost push shock, then uh, uh, you know if the uh, if profit earners try to maintain their uh, their uh, the try to defend the target uh, based on on, on on function ten, what will happen is a kind of a reflection at the macroeconomic level of what I'm showing you at the level of the single firm. So with a when with so with profit earners defending a target, the you know this will basically produce a shift from uh, uh, from from wage to to from from uh, wages to profits. Um, you can see at the uh, in a very simple simulation of of, uh, uh, of profits uh, wages uh, that basically uh, and the, following the shock in the initial period. Way the uh, profit earners are able to to you know to kind of exploit the, uh, the the shock to maintain their target while wage earners are not and uh, well so in the second scenario instead we uh, we consider uh, you know similar to what uh, has been shown at the micro level that profit earners cannot only limit themselves to maintain profit at a certain percentage of cost prior to the shock. But if, uh, but instead, if uh, uh, markups are increasing in uh, in some sectors uh, that are that are significant for inflation, as, as, as Isabella Weber and Boston would say, then the the profit share target would evolve uh, over time and would increase as markup adjusts. So in the initial period, the profit the target will be given by the the one. Uh, prior to the shock, and after time T1, we'll see uh, you know, a gener general positive function in which the, the, the target profit average profit share is a function of the, of the, of the actual profit share in, uh, in, in sectors that are uh, significant for inflation. Um, so what, what will happen in this uh, scenario is that uh, after the first, so after after the first shock, after the cost push shock occurs, then 
you know, there is a one-time uh, increase in the in profit share as a symmetric one-time decrease in the wage share, but then as the markups adjust, uh, the, 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 the redistribution of income from wages to, 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 uh, to, to from wage earners to profit earners will, will go on. So uh, the, just to sum up, the, um, the, what the paper tries to show is that we don't need workers to explain about the inflation. Uh, following a cost uh, push shock, price increase can be driven by profit share targeting or markup targeting, which is essentially the same. Um, so, uh, look, in other terms, trying to explain the uh, current inflation wave on the basis of a conflict view of inflation does not require including workers in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a more full fledged uh, conflict inflation models. When workers are not the, the responsible for, for, for price changes. So uh, profit share targeting in other terms or markup targeting is the, uh, the necessary and uh, sufficient condition to, uh, to, to explain <clears throat> temporary sellers uh, inflation. So um, uh, in the what, what we argue is that there is the possibility to reconcile micro and macro aspects of the current inflation scenario in a straightforward way when at the micro level we can we can remodel upward flexibility in the sector of markup caused by the permissive pricing environment in the post-COVID recovery, uh, with uh, essentially sector shift benefiting the benefiting profit earners, and at the macroeconomic level. Uh, we uh, we kind of um, uh, recovered and, and and adopted John Robinson's notion of the inflation barrier uh, by uh, kind of blaming inflation on, on, on profit earners in a way that uh, the the process is now uh, stable. So uh, there is a profit price sink rather than a wage price spiral, and uh, temporary profit inflation emerges from uh, the uh, from, uh, from 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 the targeting of uh, of, of profit earners, um, and it, it leads to a uh, so leads to temporary price surges, but permanent changes in the function of distribution of income. And of course, from this, um, um, you know, uh, from this, uh, po important policy implications follow. And actually, and as Mario was saying yesterday, I mean, just a few words, before, and then I conclude. As Mario was saying yesterday, uh, uh, if we, uh, you know, this model is for a given interest rate, right? So there is no monetary policy at all. But if we uh, think of including monetary policy, then this will actually exacerbate the process in line with the, uh, with the fact that if you increase uh, interest rates following a cost push shock, then this will, this will likely lead to the emergence of a of a Gibson paradox, of the Gibson paradox, and, and so the perverse redistribution of income can be even worse, requiring, you know, uh, so balancing the, the macroeconomic books even more on the best of workers. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Thank you.